Former Deputy Information Minister under the Estwal Mahama administration, Felix Kwachifosu, has dismissed claims that the Airbus military aircraft scandal will dent the former president's re-election bid. To begin with, there's nothing to be answered for insofar as the source documents for all this bruhaha, that is the approved judgment in which the deferred prosecution agreement is highlighted, does not make any specific claim or allegations of wrongdoing or bribery against any known Ghanaian government official who served in the previous government. Also, nobody is in fact named as having been engaged in any form of wrongdoing whatsoever. Therefore, it begs the question as to why there is even a need to speak to this matter. As far as the government of Ghana is concerned, it engaged in a legitimate transaction, purchased aircraft which are currently in use. What the documents point to is a transactional relationship between Airbus and what the documents refer to as an intermediary, intermediary five. They claim that this so-called intermediary five is, was related to a government of Ghana official, who they call government official one. They don't mention names. So we will be operating in the realms of absurdity and speculation if we purported to, we purported to answer for questions that have not been asked. So in a nutshell, there's really nothing to answer for. Let's stay on this subject matter. Adam Senanu has joined us. He is a co-chair for Citizens Movement Against Corruption. Adam, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Right. To start with, um, I mean, it seems like it's early days yet, but then there's already accusations and uh, finger pointing ongoing. From the corruption perspective, is Ghana dented in any way following this report that has leaked or that is public now? Well, of course. I mean, our international reputation has received another hit with, with this kind of reportage. Uh, there's no denying that um, this kind of investigation saying that people in Ghana received bribes and then we bought these air buses um, cannot be taken lightly. So, yes, it, we have suffered some reputational damage. With uh, the government asking the... Um the uh, special prosecutor to start investigations into this uh, allegations and yet we are unable to tell who the individuals are so the special prosecutor has been asked to look for who these persons are and then if they are found culpable dealt with according to Ghanaian law with the opposition uh, i beg your pardon the new patriotic party naming former president john ramani mahama as the government official one does that not make the work of the special prosecutor any difficult I think that the Special Prosecutor's Office should ignore everything going on in the public space and just get on with their work and quickly come up with the findings. I think that my major concern will be whether they're going to be able to expedite this particular investigation within the context of all the cases uh, the office is handling that we haven't seen much progress or reportage on. So that's a major concern. The swiftness with which the presidency assigned it to the SPO, I think that they should apply some of that also to ensuring that the human resource and other logistics are available mm. so they have some people assigned to this and we can dig and unearth whatever the facts are um, from, from investigations here. There are those who are already saying that uh, the special prosecutor being asked to do this uh, may not lead anywhere for two reasons. One, because he himself was attorney general around uh, the time, I think around 2011 there about, he was attorney general. So there's a possibility this may not have necessarily gone through his desk or he may not have advised government uh, in whichever way, so has no knowledge of it. But do you think he could be called into question himself if he's now the one going to investigate this? I think that Mr. Matt Lamidu, uh, as the head of that unit, has a track record of being very objective and independent and not the kind of person who will 
failed to call a spade a spade. I don't think that this is a stage at which one should be um, questioning his competence or integrity in terms of doing such an investigation. I think the major issue we can all see is that since the establishment of that office, it's been very slow in getting the results, and there's no doubt in my mind that it is logistical, it is the human resource uh, and their capacity to take on as many cases and deliver. Mm. Uh, and then the, the second level of accusation would be that he, the special prosecutor, has already been crying for resources, both human and material, to help him run his office effectively. If there yeah. seemed to be a sudden interest in government giving him whatever resources he needs to pursue this particular issue, do you think then there, should be, there is some political interest rather than they just giving him the right resources and tools to work normally? I'm detailed of the question. Um, can you come again? Yeah, I'm asking that there are those who are saying that the special prosecutor himself has, over the period, asked for material and human resources to be able to work effectively. Uh, he's had challenges in that front. If these resources are made available all of a sudden to pursue this, do you think that then there seems to be some extra political interest in this? Well, I mean, uh, it would be, uh, I mean, uh, let's it cuts both ways. Um, we would rather prefer that the special prosecutor's office gets all the logical support it needs. It certainly would raise eyebrows if uh, it takes this, um, and I have just been insisting that the swiftness with which the presidency uh, responded to this, the same swiftness in making sure all the resources required are provided. Um, it will yes, it will certainly raise eyebrows uh, that there is some political interest, and one cannot deny that that probably would be the, would be a, a good enough reason why we would find that happening. Be that the case, we still need to make sure that that office is adequately resourced to deliver. And I'm sure once Andrew has the human and logistical resources, he is not going to just be pursuing one one party or the other. It will cut across. Right. And, and finally, what would be the best approach to this? How should the special prosecutor, you know, handle this? Um, I think that the same kind of procedural arrangements that are in place for picking up cases, um, um, weighing them in terms of the criteria to find out what is their, their priority, um, assigning investigators, getting the information, um, and trying to make sure you have uh, a case that can get to court and, and can will not be lost. I think that's the same approach. It's just focusing on that rather than all the um, political um, twisting and attempts to score points that uh, is in the uh, public space and it's not going to amount to much eventually. I mean, obviously it's a political season and all the parties are going to try and score points on this one. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for talking to us. Uh, Adam Sananu, co-chair, Citizen Movement Against Corruption. Thank you for your time.